but I thought I'd bring along a little uh, slide here on what I have so far. It's my tower project at my house, and uh, I actually brought it with me tonight, so if I have any volunteers go up and I pick up the we can bring all the sections in here, and I'll show you everything in here. So. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> Actually, just real quick, show of hands. Who here has a tower at their house? Stationary fixed tower. Wow. How many do, do, do not have a tower? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be up. It just has to be. <laughs> All right. Anybody that wants a tower in the near future? Nobody? Everybody's good. <laughs> I see Bob, K1Y. I'll be there to help. But let me show you what I got, and I'll try to roll through these as quick as I can. It shouldn't take long because it is unfinished. This is the back of my house here. This is on the east side of the building. And uh, it's basically a one-story house, but it's uh, the grading on it slopes downward. So it looks like a two-story house, but it is not. And let's see if I can do this without it. All right, X marks the spot. This is actually two feet by six inch square, which is what originally what Rowan, I think, called for for my uh, Rowan 25. It uh, ended up being much larger, and I'll show you that in another picture. These next couple of pictures are just me planning and trying to figure out where I want it, just sitting on the uh, on the ground. Nothing's really been done yet, but me daydreaming right. about my tower. <laughs> and more daydreaming about my tower. Another one of me figuring out what I'm going to do. Boy, I'm going to work at HF. And one last one. So and then after that, I decided to grab a shovel and start digging a hole. Started digging a hole, and the UPS guy showed up. Came with my Diamond X... Uh, 510 antenna vertical so needless to say that stopped the digging for the day and I poked around with the antenna uh, next time I got back at it some of the uh, sections were uh, most of the sections actually were all donated I, ver I have very little money into the project except for the concrete pour and the base uh, I wanted to make it look a little better so I went ahead and uh, got some cold uh, galvanizing compound I went with this because it actually has, it says 93% pure zinc added. It's good for fence repairs and whatnot, so I thought I'd give it a go. Mentioned this to uh, Jim, KK. One W, he kind of leaned over to me and he said, you know, the birds just crap on these things. What are you doing? <laughs> so, anyway, being my first tower, I wanted to make it look a little better, so I went with that. And began the process of sanding, which uh, some of the sections are not done, but we'll go ahead and finish those later when it starts up. Now here's a picture of basically what the hole was. This is uh, the two by six foot uh, hole that's actually dug up and this was the original plan. Drop the section in as most of you know and just go ahead and fill it in and be done with it after you rig up the, uh, get it plumbed up. I ended up not doing that either. And another view of that. And you can see, and I don't have a pointer, but the dirt alongside of the foundation <coughs> is now gone because we had a huge amount of rain when this was going through. <laughs> and uh, this thing kept caving in on me. I babysat it for a while. I was waiting for the concrete guy to come. He was on vacation. So I had to babysit this hole for quite some time. And that's how the hole got larger and larger and larger. Oh, thanks. Okay, so this is more or less a top view. And now actually you can see back here, I've already had one cave in. Now you got foundation exposed, but before I had about eight inches around here. And in this area right here, you can see it's starting to give way over here. So it was a matter of continuing to clean up, and I needed to work quick. Uh, some more sanding. This is one of the house brackets that are installed. It's, it's actually a two bracketed system. This is one of them that I just got done painting it up, and that's it where it was drying. Moved on to the, uh, the reinforcing cage. I built this myself, uh, kind of don't do it for a living, as most of us, but we are amateurs. I uh, came up with my own design, fits in the hole, just basically keep the concrete in place and to keep it from uh, cracking or uh, just basically falling apart over the years. And that, that base in there was just to kind of figure out how it was going to look on the center. Uh, I wasn't planning to bury the base. Uh, these ones my wife shot, so of course they're a little blurry, but that's me putting the cage together. Uh, this is the cage outside. Went with just uh, some rebar reinforcement in the center. Uh, just tied it to the, uh, the cage right here. And just wire tied it in. And then when it was in the hole, I, I later added rebar going on each four corners just to keep it in place and, and bang those right into the ground. Uh, just so when the concrete was being poured, it was going to stay in place. That's what it looks like in the hole. Uh, that's pretty much the way the hole stayed until the uh, gentleman came to pour the concrete. 
The only thing that's not shown in this photo is uh, the rebar verticals that were in each corner. And uh, there is just another screen on top that's keeping the exposure uh, above, just more or less like you would with a sidewalk, just to keep it from cracking. That's about an eight inch exposure from the ground level. Kind of high, but I wanted it a little bit above the, the ground level. Uh, the problem I ran into, first rule, do your homework. This is a base that I bought off of eBay. Didn't pay a lot of money for it. Never bought a base before in my life. Apparently there's one hole here and one hole in the back. You can't see it. And I was kind of wondering, where are the rest of the holes? I didn't understand why, because it's going to be J-bolted down. Apparently, I guess this one here, as many of you might know, it's just for a pin. Uh, it's going to have a, uh, the bolt one in the center and pin the back, not really made for what I was trying to do. Um, which that's, that confirmed it, that was from online, that was doing my homework after the fact, that's what I found. It says exactly not really made for what I was trying to do on, a, uh, on my self-sporting tower. So what did I do? Sold it on eBay. <laughs> W2EJC bought it out of Plattsburgh. He was uh, looking for that piece and I uh, used the money that I made off of that and actually on a side note, afterwards he was telling me about his tower. I met him over there on 3.875 and we talked about his tower for a while. And uh, so I took the money I got from that, went and bought the right base that I wanted since that's what I wanted to do. This one is for self-supporting. It is 19 inches square, half inches thick. I pretty much, well, when I picked it up, I thought it came off the USS Massachusetts. Pretty thick. Um, one failure that I had to turn into not a failure, quick thinking. This is uh, the subfloor. This would be the first level. This is in the basement. Here's one of the, uh, I guess, the connecting uh, rafters going across to the floor. This is from the first bracket. I wanted it to be down here below the level and then have a plate over it. As you can see, measure twice, cut once or drill, uh, drill once. It's right on the edge. So I had to add this sister board in here and uh, try to do the best I could. This was temporary in place. I've since put in a, uh, there's a metal bracket in here now covering both. And uh, so I showed the good, the bad, and the ugly, even that, even that, you know, just throwing it out there. So always double check. This is the jury rigging now. This is basically just before the guy came to pour it. And uh, he came down to take a look at it. He told me this was no good. These are angle irons here that were fitting underneath the L was fitting under the base and obviously when he poured the concrete he was worried I was never going to get those angle irons out again. So he asked me to come up with a different system. That's me attaching the bracket to the house for the final position before I nailed in. This is what I came up with. Maybe you've seen it before, did my research, nothing new, didn't really reinvent anything. Just have the boards laying across the form and that little board right there is a spacer to make this level with the concrete. And I basically just U-bolted it in plumbed it and it stayed right on target throughout the pour. And that's just a side view of the same thing, but that's what we're looking at. That's actually four by four, by the way. And it's probably about four and a half uh, to just under five feet deep. After the pour, this is how it looked, babysatting it for a while, putting the tarp on it and letting it do its thing. We still had rain going on during this time, so I wanted to keep the, uh, the rain off the concrete. This is uh, some pillars of me taking off the form, so you can see how High the exposure is eight inches. Another shot of that. Top view from our deck on the side. This is kind of what it looks like as one section with the with the house bracket now in place right here. And I still got one more of those to put up. That's pretty much all how it sits right now. All done. Of course, now there's about snow or two. Snow is about up there around here somewhere. I uh, went ahead and put double nuts on it, which is probably always a good idea in large fender washers on each corner, just so they don't back off. And uh, currently right now, from the Roan base, there's that little drain hole right there. I'm not sure if that's enough. If that gets clogged, I guess stuff could start back flowing up. But for now, that's what I have. I don't want to get into it too much and start losing uh, the uh, structure of it. First climb, one section, whoopee. But that's it right there. My wife came out onto the deck, took the picture. I was uh, greasing up the ends there for the next section. This is about where I left off with it. This is two sections up. This is what I did by myself, having 
both sections together and then manhandling it up by myself because everybody was gone and everybody else had stuff to do. Finally got it in place and I was like, wow, that's hard, <laughs> especially by yourself. So after that, I knew I was in trouble. I had to call in reinforcements. Meet the reinforcements, KB-1, NWA, Jen. There he is here. Came equipped with gin pole. And uh, I think this is uh, Ed's uh, first tower project post his incident. And I uh, wanted to see how he fared while turning wrenches up uh, with some considerable height there. There's some more pictures there. Right now it's currently, this is the current height it's at. It's only about 40 feet right now. I have another 10 feet section to put on it. Uh, because it was used, one of the sections does not fit well. I need to tweak it out and get it back on center. So right now we decided just to put the top on it and run with it. We got all done with that. We put all our tools away and we, Ed was just about out of here. And he saw the 510 diamond sitting in the corner of the basement. He's like, what's that? And I go, oh, that's, the, that's the vertical I got. So when it's all done, we can have it. He goes, you know, those things don't work well in the box. So took the tools back out, put it together. Up the tower we went, just for now, because we knew we were going to stop, at least I can get 2 meters and 440 on the tower. And there it is going up, just for now, it's uh, right on the center of the mistletoe there. That's a picture of Ed, I think, on the tower from the driveway. And of course it looks a little lower, but don't forget my, my, uh, my backyard slopes, so we lost a little bit there, but the wife didn't want the tower in the front yard. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, she was good at the backyard. Uh, after that, went on the grounding. Ed was gone. He's like, see ya. Want nothing to do with that. So uh, I had a hard time getting eight uh, these these grounding rods. Everybody had the big boxes had the eight foot standard five eights. I went overkill, as I usually like to do when I do these projects. These are ten foot three quarter inch, um, and I got three of them, one for each leg that I will ground uh, independently. Um, and, and actually, to be honest with you, I went to a little story. went to Granite City Electric for these. The guy looked at me weird when I walked in there, wanted three, ten foot, three quarter inch rod. Asked me what company I worked for. I had to go through the whole schmeal. Told him I was a licensed hand. Turned out he was an ex ham from the early 80s. I forgot his call. But after I proved who I was and he felt confident enough, he sold me the uh, grounding rods. <laughs> so there we go, grounding rods in hand, and off I go. This is kind of the setup how I have it. Um, these are ten feet apart from each other just to get uh, maximum displacement. If I do have some sort of a uh, charge or static, it'll disperse uh, as best as it can. Overkill, grounding's kind of a weird issue. I've talked to 100 hams, I get 100 answers. So this is what I did. They're not closer to the uh, tower because I have this, uh, I have some uh, structures in the way. I have this ta uh, decking over here and I have the poor man's patio over here. So this is probably about 12 to 15 feet away and then 10 feet apart. And then uh, that's when the wife came out and said, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, uh, I'm going to put these grounding rods in. And her big concern is because it was the backyard and so close to the patio. She didn't want this was still getting nailed down. And at this point, uh, Bob, K1YO, had helped me come over and swing a hammer. And we were having a good time uh, getting exhausted with 10 footers. but. We were going to leave them originally around the six inches or so that was there. The wife was concerned. We have young kids that come over and nobody wants to get a kid impaled on a grounding rod. So I wanted to, I ended up making them flush, which is why it looks like I'm playing on the uh, 18th hole here because uh, I added to that by doing this. A little bit of plumbing. Not a lot, not deep, but just enough to cover the hole. And you can see one section plugged in. This is going right to the center, uh, the center tower leg. And uh, the cup's just kind of sitting there. So what I did to take care of that is I just put a handful of landscaping rocks in there. And uh, that's just basically, the only thing it does is just hold this cup in place. It's not a really elaborate system, folks. It's just enough to kind of keep it in there. But this is also nice, too, because if you have a summer where there's an ex you know, exceptional drought, it can actually induce water and you know, keep the ground wet, which isn't too bad. And all I did is I went ahead and capped it. Not really happy with this cap because I'm not sure if the mower is going to find that and wing that thing right off. I guess we'll find out. Um, I know some of the other hardware stores, they make a flush one too that just has a slotted uh, thing. I think I'll probably swap those out and put those in. Then it will be just this level because I'm not totally confident that that's uh, going to miss the lawnmower. And, uh, and you can also see the one grounding coming in. It's buried underground and that's how it is. Uh, that's the other house bracket that came in that's yet to be put up. 
And that's the end of my presentation. This is how the tower currently sits uh, from the backyard. Uh, we had just take, gotten done and uh, taken a photo. I just says it was just starting to turn nightfall. No HF ornaments right now. Um, I have the mini beam that Jim has seen and uh, those five bands and bought that off the tuck. And uh, we'll probably just go ahead with that two meter and uh, I'd like to pick up a six meter somewhere and that's it. But any questions? Not, no, it's actually just in the ground right now because I did not, because it is grounding, I didn't want to isolate it in the, in the plastic tubing. I actually wanted to go ahead and ground out, so right now it's not. Uh, we'll work our way back, go ahead. Yeah, just a suggestion. Um, uh, you know, on the couple of you using, um, I was thinking you could probably um, vice that and just cut the, the nut head off and leave just half an inch to a wrench. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you could probably do that. Save yourself some money. Uh, if you just want, you need enough just to get a wrench on here. Yeah, and that's and that's why I went with the big one is because I just figured I'd just take the big plumber thing and spin it right off. But then I was like, well, that's still kind of exposed. Do a large adjustable on that and just cut it down to half an inch and then you'll clear the water hole. You know, yeah. And I, and I noticed when I cranked it all the way down, it did go considerably low to its final position. Right. But then I was like, well, dirt's probably going to get on this. I'll never get this thing back off again. So yeah, that's a good idea. Any other questions? Just to go around, sure. Absolutely. Well, I'm not really planning on going in there too much unless I was adding water. Like I said, on a, on a bad summer drought, it's good to keep the, the ground going. And, but yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, if I need to get in there, it's, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to struggle at it. I'll probably just rip, end up ripping the cup right out because it's only held in by the rock. And I, yeah. I could take it by my hand and I can't really move it. But, you know, if you, if you really try to get in there with a wrench, you're lifting that cup up for sure. Yeah, it's easy to work. So you could put it, vice it, and do a nice straight cut and just leave half an inch and you'd be ready to go. Right, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Nevada. What gauge wire did you use to connect the tower to the ground wire? That's the number four braided uh, ground wires. I could have went a little bigger, but because of my distance, now you're starting to talk, it's really getting added up. I really didn't want the grounding rod so far out, but being where the location of the tower is, it's centered on that peak of the addition. It's really all I had. I didn't, I couldn't, unless I was starting to pull up the decking and starting to bang it from the top of the deck and then until I got down. So I just came out with it, it should be fine. It's just going to ground out and find uh, the shortest path and go down there. So, Any other questions over here? Uh, how deep did you sink the ground wire? The ground wire. Uh, I believe the ground. I try. I used one of those. Uh, was it the old? Uh, I think Rocky sold them. The old uh, dropping wrenches or shovels. There, little thin, thin ones. So the, the depth of whatever that is, probably like a foot. I think it is. And I went down like another shovel way. So it's probably about, probably give or take about two feet down. Anybody else? That's it. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Stan, that was great. Thanks for doing that. And uh, so the next presentation, I don't know if I have a call sign up here.